So I am Melanie Schmidt with Minnesota Title, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know me, and a lot of you guys probably know Tanya as well with New American Funding. And with me today, I have Randy, who is with Minnesota Title. He's down in our Burnsville office. He is a really good person to do this uh, interview type thing with and how we incorporate Title and the lender together because he's done almost every role in Title. He has coordinated files. He's closed files. So he's going to be really good with explaining part of the Title process as well. So I'll just kind of get started with saying, especially for some of you new agents that haven't had a transaction yet, the title company is basically the third party that works on behalf of the lender and the buyer. And you hire them to research and ensure the title of the home that you're buying. So it's really important to have a good title company. It's important to have a good lender because the more that they work together, the more smooth your transactions will be. So I'm just going to play interviewee here and kind of go through the process. And we'll figure it out as we go and how these things work. So, Tanya, first of all, when you meet with somebody and they get approved for their loan and everything, do you even talk about title at that point? Or tell us a little bit about your process before it even goes over into the purchase agreement side of things. So um, whenever we work with a new home buyer, um, you know, we're really taking them through the application piece, getting them qualified, doing a really deep dive into the loan itself and what they're eligible for and meeting their financing goals. Um, part of that conversation does involve title because there are title fees associated with a transaction in the closing side, um, as well as the title company that they're going to be working with, um, cash to close and different things like that. So we do touch on the title piece as well. So it's it's good to know, you know, who we're working with and who, you know, where that partnership is at. So at that point, they already have decided which title company that they are working with when they meet with you, correct? <laughs> Mm, not always. Um, so whenever I'm going through that pre-approval process, it's typically at the beginning phases of the process for this borrower. They typically haven't even been out to look at houses yet. Um, so at this point in time, they do not know who they're going to be using for title unless they have someone that is maybe a family or friend that is in the business that they would like to use. So a lot of that direction will come from the relationships that we have in the business. Um, it may come from their real estate partner that they're working with and finding the home that will help give them um, contacts um, in the title side. So they probably are getting guidance also from their real estate agent if they have never done a transaction before and are unfamiliar with the title process, they probably ask their agent, well, who would you use and things like that. And of course, everybody's going to say Minnesota title, um, <laughs> unless they have some backups. But <laughs> does anybody ever ask It's always you, Minnesota Tanya? title. Yeah, yeah, right. Does anybody ever ask you, Tanya, what title company should I use? Are you ever a reference for that? Um, I would say people might ask me, but usually that reference is very much coming from the real estate side of things is what I found. Um, so I've been in the business for a little while. And I would say that once that um, client, that buyer is working with their agent, their agent has that relationship built and they really give that um, that guidance on the, the title, the home warranty, um, the inspector, things like that. So Right. Okay, so once the purchase agreement comes over to the title company and we get started on the title work, Randy, at what point do we reach out to the lender or does the lender reach out to us? How does that even work? Oh, we usually get um, a title order from the lender itself, or a lot of times I will already have a purchase agreement as an order from the agent. So to kind of touch on the relationships like she was talking about, um, sometimes you'll get a file from the agent. Sometimes you get a file just from the loan officer. Sometimes the team, the agent has a preferred loan officer and that's how you meet the loan officer that way. Um, one of my biggest loan officers, Brian Sunder, who's with new American funding. So how he does it, um, he works for a lot of agents here who I also work through, but I also work directly with Brian. So a lot of times they will ask him for that reference or that reference will come from the agents or me. So we'll get the new order and we usually reach out right when we get the order to um, kind of like a welcome Minnesota title in the coming weeks. Here's what you'll hear from us. Uh, a lot of times I'll pick up the phone. If my loan officer gives me some direction, it's a new home build or a new first time buyer. Um, it comes over. Usually it, it will come as a title order and then I'll see it. We'll send it over, get it open, get everything ordered. Next step would be scheduling. Um, we try to get ahead of scheduling as much as we can. I think we've gotten perfected getting that done ahead of time. And I think um, 
building relationships with your loan officer and the agents makes everything very cohesive. And I think the buyers, a lot of times I would say, I would honestly say 90% of the time, they have no idea even what a title company is, or if they've closed before, they still don't have someone they're going to go back to. So yeah. all of that is coming from the loan officer or the real estate agent. And we all, we're all doing that because the transaction flows well, you know, so you're getting a pre-approval and then your lender, and then we get the order. And then the three of us all work together to make sure it's kind of a seamless purchase for the actual buyer. So we get information from each other. A lot of times I'll get a call about something on the lender side. I can then, I won't say, you know, call Brian. I'll call Brian or email him. He'll reach out to them. Or if it's more of a real estate question, they'll reach out to the, I'll have them reach out to the agent or I will call the agent and have them reach out. So it's definitely a team thing. And I definitely have a lot of different teams that use the loan officer and then the loan officer that just uses us. But I think once you establish that relationship, it makes things go a lot easier for an agent, especially on the marketing point of view, because they can just send the file over and then they can go hit the streets, go, you know, Zoom these days because we're not marketing in, in person right. anymore. But <laughs> I think it just gives them peace of mind that their lender and their closer are going to work together and make sure everything gets taken care of. Right. And that's, that's a great point. And the other thing I want to point out to that um, Randy hit on is when, so the pre-approval process, typically on my side as a lender, whenever I'm going through the pre-approval process, we're hyper-focused on the loan itself, not so much on the title piece. We just talk about a couple of pieces on there and bringing them into the conversation. Um, where the motions really start happening is once we have a contract. So once we have a contract in place, that's where we are taking that file and we are ordering as a lender, we're ordering the title with um, the, you know, with Minnesota title, we send that order over. Um, same thing that Randy said, the real estate agent hopefully is sending that over as well um, so that there isn't anything that's missed. Um, and then behind the scenes, whenever we're going through the processing, um, that order um, can sit well and Randy can talk about this, what the order actually consists of that the lender needs back. Um, but once we get all those title pieces back, then that's whenever we can clear that file through underwriting. After that is whenever we start getting into that close, closing disclosure um, and the final cash to close. Um, so Melanie, I didn't want to steal your, your um, questions there, but I'm kind of like leading into like, Randy, what happens whenever we, when the lender sends the title order over? What happened? Yeah. So once we get the title order, um, it will then go to, so back to back up a little bit, depending on how we get the order. So a lot of times the, like I've kind of um, got my agents set up to where as soon as they have a fully signed purchase agreement, they'll send it to me. About 80% of them do that. Some will still wait for inspection. Most of them send it to me right away. Because as soon as we have a purchase agreement, we're going to order the title work. Yeah. And then once the lender sends us the actual title order, I can shoot it out that day because we already have it. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we don't have it, we'll get the title order from the lender. And then a lot of times the purchase agreement comes from the lender as well with the title order. Then we'll order it with the county. It takes um, these days it's a little bit longer, but we want to say three days, three to five days at the most. And then we send back to the lender their closing disclosure with the preliminary number, our stuff on it, which never changes. The taxes, our CPL that the lender orders, um, wire instructions to send us the lender wire on the day of closing, um, and then any assessments or plat searches at that time. So then the lender can then get that over to underwriting because that's what they're going to need to get that final cleared to close. And so at Minnesota Title, What we've kind of formulated over the years is we used to wait till we had everything, the assessment search, the plat, um, final title order, everything until we sent it. And we had a lot of lenders going, where's our title work? Where's our title work? So now we, as soon as we have the title work, we'll send it. And then as soon as we have the plat, we'll send updated title work and we'll say, here's what changed. We won't have you re-review it, just tell you what changed. So that way you're never having to ask where the title work is because like, you know, it's a huge piece to get into underwriting. Right. Exactly right. That's good. So what do you do um, if whenever that title work comes back, what if there's um, an issue on the title? So depending on, so if we're doing both sides, like representing the buyer and the seller, we'll go to write one of our coordinators. We'll go right to work on clearing the issue. 
if we are doing just the buy side. So when we're sending you guys title, the lender, we're also sending the seller's title company title work as well, because that's what they used to work off of. So at that point, it'd be on them to make sure they get those issues cleared and then issue uh, clear title work to close. Right. Okay. I love it. This is all making sense now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Putting the puzzle pieces together. And so we do every like, single day. Oh my know, goodness. Right? It's like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> so has there any has there been any huge changes um, due to the pandemic that we're in since COVID? Because like in the past, did the lenders always come to the closing, Randy, or just some of the time? And then how many come now? So I there has been a, a quite a big change so we've all we what we call pre-signing sellers now that's always been something that's been on the table if you couldn't make an actual closing or um you know you were it was too far away we'll pre-sign sellers and send docs but since march that has been the absolute standard so it used to be everyone at the table so if we're doing the purchase it would be me at the head of the table my buyer my agent my loan officer sellers on this side of the table, their closer, their agent. That doesn't happen anymore. So um, we're pre-signing everyone. So basically the seller will sign their docs a few days ahead of closing and send the originals to us. <clears throat> so then at closing, it's just the buyer. Now, <clears throat> our, you know, we leave it up. And me personally, it's kind of up to your closer, but me personally, if the loan officers want to come, they can come because I know it's a pretty important relationship. Brian Sunder's in this office, so he always just stops by and says hi. And then, because a lot of loan officers appreciate the fact that they're kind of done at that point and they know that it's going to close and they're going to make sure everything gets taken care of. So they are um, just popping in to say hi, and then everything from there will get it closed for them. Um, so the closings are a really great opportunity to just be there and make sure that all those final pieces are wrapped up. Um, and there has been quite a mix of. Um, I think just across the industry, as far as certain closers that want to limit the buyers, you know, just to having buyers there. Um, some closers are like, that's totally fine for the buyer and the agent. Um, loan officer can come, but just know that, hey, we want to limit the amount of people that are in the room. Um, so there has been, uh, I think, a big change in that. I want to say this year, I've only been to a couple of closings and I miss that a lot. The closing is my favorite part. I know. So that's, the, that's like the grand finale. Um, but so when Randy comes back, I do want to talk also about the um, closing disclosure and getting the final numbers put together. Um, but that's an important part that I, I wanted to share today too, um, because you know, we work, the agent works so hard to find that perfect property for the buyer. Um, and then once we have that contract to the day of closing, we usually have updates, you know, maybe once a week, five times a week, maybe we don't have anything for a few days. Um, and it's just because there's so many uh, working pieces that are going on behind the scenes. So some key um, communication items are obviously the appraisal um, and when that's in, um, the title work and when that's in, titles coordinating the closing. That is um, mostly titles job to make sure with all parties that that closing is uh, coordinated between them. They head that up. Um, many times the agent or loan officer or borrower may say, hey, I need to close on this day. AM or PM is better for me. If they've identified that, then Everyone does a really good job at, at um, coordinating around that timeline. But there's a lot of people to get scheduled. It's not just the buyer. It's also the seller side. Um, and then if there's any other pieces, if we have extra family members, power of attorney, things like that that are going on. So to get to the closing table, um, what we do prior to closing is we send the final CD, the closing disclosure. And that closing disclosure has the total numbers balanced out for that buyer's closing. So the borrower has identified their homeowner's insurance. Um, the title company has balanced out with the seller. Um, we know exactly what we need for um, property taxes, parations, homeowners association, all the things come together so that we're balanced out to the penny so that the borrower can then either wire funds to closing or bring a cashier's check to closing. So what we do is we send the initial CD to the client um, just so that they know that, hey, you know, some numbers are coming. We're going to work on fine tuning these. But that's also when we send it to the title company so that we can balance out 
Um, once we are balanced and some of the things that I've noticed that might come in a little later is um, if we don't have the seller numbers or if we don't have some of the final association items. Um, but otherwise, we get the information balanced out rather quickly. Um, and then that's whenever I as the lender send that final CD, that final closing disclosure to the buyer and let them know, you know, remind them, you know, don't forget this is Minnesota title sent your closing confirmation. This is when and where you need to be, um, you need to bring your driver's license, a valid one at that, um, your social security number, you need to know it, and bring your cashier's check payable to Minnesota title for this dollar amount, unless we're wiring. So that's that process that we get them prepped for prior to closing. Um, but Randy, do you want to talk about um, when we send you the initial disclosure to balance out what are um, some of the things that I mentioned were just um, those final pieces, seller number, um, taxes, <clears throat> proration, association. What are some other things that you're looking to balance out with? Obviously commission is important. Yeah. So what we're looking for on that, and that's like the magic piece that one, once we get it balanced and you know, everyone's good to go and it's always towards the end. Everything, everybody always wants that final number. And we also realized, you know, especially this summer, it got very, very busy and the final numbers were getting pushed a little bit towards the end because everyone across the board was pretty busy. So we definitely try to balance right when we get it. And then um, so what happens is you'll get it. Uh, the closer will get it or it'll actually go straight to my coordinator, uh, Ryan, and he'll balance. <clears throat> and like you said, usually we have everything. So we'll, what we're doing was we're putting your fees into our system because you already have ours. So we're putting yours in. And then we make sure that I have a number that the buyer's bringing to the table, you have a number, and that they're the exact same number. And yeah. if they're not if they're not the same number, then we look line by line what's off. Um, and a lot of the piece you touched on is the HOA. So a lot of times we're waiting on the sellers to send us the dues letter or their numbers. Right. So if we don't have the HOA at that time, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll reach out and say, can you just send us what the monthly HOA is? That way we can at least plug that in. Um, because that's going to cost that's a cost to the buyer at closing because usually we'll pay their use their that to pay their first month yep. and then we'll prorate a month that they're in so you def, you def, we always and i know the lender does and the title does they never want the lend the number to change at the table that's right like the one exactly thing that we're, we're shooting for yep. so we usually get it bounced pretty quick it's kind of a i mean there's an art to getting it when it's off but it's Eight times out of 10, they're usually pretty right on. Um, the only yeah. things that are off sometimes are taxes. It's just because everyone's system pro rates a fraction of a cent different. So <clears throat> we usually go with what the lender has. Um, and then a lot of times we're looking to, to make sure that uh, nothing got missed in the initial CD because that's where you're getting the taxes from and where you're building your escrow from and from the tax cert. Sometimes it happens to where that we feel like the escrow counts maybe not padded enough or that's the a dollar amounts not enough because sometimes people get different tax certs so we're kind of mm -hmm. double checking taxes at that time too just to make right. sure in the in the following year they don't get a letter saying we need 500 extra dollars to cover your right title. exactly and that can get a little um a little iffy too whenever we have that um the change of the tax season you know whenever yeah. they're changing from 2020 to 21 <laughs> or whatever um, or collecting taxes. So um, I guess one of the things I want to make sure that the agents understand is um, on the lender side, the way that I operate is prior to closing, I am sending out once again, the closing confirmation that Minnesota title had sent to everybody um, confirming the closing location, date and time. Um, so I'm sending that I'm uh, referencing the final walkthrough to make sure that that's scheduled with the agent. Um, reminding them about their utilities and mail and things like that. Um, the final cash to close, if that's coming in a wire or a cashier's check, bringing the valid ID, knowing the social security number, and then something that Randy talked about, we don't want numbers to change at the table. Um, however, if something were to come in and that association, homeowners association has been tricky because they've come in kind of at the last minute, the one other thing that I ask the borrowers to bring is a personal checkbook, just in case, because even if those numbers are off five cents higher, they can just write a check for the five cents. Um, and if it's five cents lower, well, then title will write you a check back for the five cents difference. Um, so that is a, a hit list that we give the borrower prior to closing. So it's kind of like that final message. 
because during the process, there's so many things that are happening um, that we don't want them to have there. They have busy lives or maybe they're, they're teaching their kids at home full time right now, whatever the case may be. Um, and so chasing down all the miscellaneous emails, it's nice to just wrap it up all at the last time and send them the final, um, list for what they're going to be doing prior to or at closing. Um, so how long does closing take nowadays? So, um, and to touch on what you just said, that is oh, yeah. amazing. That is an amazing list. I, I, I need a copy a of list. that so I can send that to everyone. That is um, a lot of things that you talked about there happen a lot. So our closing notice when we're sending it out to the buyers, what time of closing is, it says in there, you know, um, cashier's check made out to Minnesota title or wire, ask us for instructions. Nobody reads that. So all they see is no, Here's my closing. they don't. <laughs> so I, I cannot stress enough for the agents. Um, Prep your buyers. Make sure that they have their cash to close covered. They know we're if they don't have the number, they're gonna let you know. So I think that point's good. But it ha I cannot. It, you'd think it's not a normal thing, but it happens a lot where people show up and they're like, okay, okay, now I send my money. So it's definitely something that needs to happen before closing. Um, yeah. And all those other things you talked about are very important. That's just the key items you hit on that list for sure. Super important, um, you guys, and that's agents. Um, like Randy said, that those final items, and if you have um, maybe not had a transaction yet, or maybe just a couple transactions in, um, that is one of the things that you want to put on your checklist. Um, and not just have on your checklist to make sure maybe that it's done, um, but to make sure that you understand your lender relationship and your title relationship, and are these companies providing those services for you to ensure that your client has a very smooth experience and, and transaction because all of these parties that are working together are going to be key to, um, they help in your success in, in your business and um, getting more referrals from your, from your past clients. So future business from them. Um, but so the closing, like yeah. whenever I, when I send out, so I will tell you too what I do. Um, when I get your closing confirmation, I actually do create a calendar item where I send it to the borrowers. Um, I send it to the agents and um, it has your closing um, information in there and in the body of the email with the, the address and everything so that they can just, if they're driving, because I know like me, I look on my phone calendar all the time and push that address and see how many minutes it's going to take me to get there. And then I always try and beat that time because I think I'm, I'm a race car driver or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm like, oh, it's going to take me 30 minutes. I got another, it'll take me 20. That's it's a fine. good idea. Oh, so anyway, um, when they get to the closing, I typically block that window out for one hour. And I know it doesn't usually take that long, right? But how long does it take to do a closing? So these days, it's definitely since March, it's kind of trimmed some of the time because there's not as much chaos at the table. Um, it's just us and the buyer. Um, so my closings typically, I always tell everyone reserve an hour. So yeah. that's, kind of, you know, just in case. Um, but usually I have docs ready um, and we get everything pretty, we go through everything pretty quick. Um, I kind of, and I know a lot of closers will do this, especially at Minnesota Title. You kind of tailor your closing to your buyer. If it's uh -huh. a first time home buyer, it might take a little bit longer because we spend a little bit more time on each document just because I don't, I can tell if my buyer's looking a little overwhelmed and they're not sinking in what I'm telling them. So I don't want them to be intimidated because they don't know what's going on. So yeah. I'll take a little bit more time. But if I'm purchasing for, you know, an investor or uh, someone who's purchased several times who has a moving truck running in the parking lot, I, I know that they want to get the important part. <laughs> Yeah. And we get everything signed. I usually have everything dated before they get here because the day of you can date it that morning. So I love that the same day. Uh, and that helps a lot. So uh, honestly, 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. You, you should be in and out of here um, and, and good to go with your copies and your information on how to homestead. Good. I love that. Um, and so it's so funny that you say that you you date it for them because you can date it the day of. Um, yeah. I've actually so some people we do a lot of electronic. Electronic is big. Right. And every now and again, I have a client that wants to um, sit down and go over the papers which is great. I always go and I date them beforehand. <laughs> like, we're we're going to make sure that the date's consistent. Cause if you ask me what day it is today, I'm still going to look at my phone just to make sure it's the right date. So anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's good. Cool. 
Cool. I love it. What else do we need to know? I think, um, uh, again, that, that hit list that you had for items to go over with your buyer, that is a key piece of information. Um, I think agents, you guys could definitely, definitely do yourselves a favor by going over that stuff with your buyers. Um, and also, you know, I think everyone, and I will say this, it want, every <clears throat> we strive for at the closing, I want to hear, well, that was easier than I thought. Yeah. When you get to the table, the buyers need to realize that the hard work's done. They're just done. here to sign some paperwork and we're going to hand them some keys. And I think at the end is when everyone realizes why we work with the lender we work with. Hopefully the lender realizes why they work with us and the agent realizes why they work with both of us. And we do that. We try to get that done in and out every single day. Um, So I think uh, we got a lot of good topics here. I I can't can't go over that list many times because I see the same things over and over again. And you really hit a lot of important stuff on there, but And plus closings are supposed to be fun. So I think, you know, come to the table. We've got everything we need. We'll get everything taken care of and we'll move on from there. Yeah. Good. I love it. Um, What about after closing? Uh, We, I have always told people, I'm like, listen, you're going to get a lot of junk mail, mail that looks legitimate. Um, When you get that, you need to either reach out to the title person, reach out to me, reach out to your agent, send us a picture of what you got, whatever. Um, but don't be sending anyone a check for a deed or something yeah. um, that they've requested in the mail. It's because it, it looks very legitimate, but there's a lot of junk mail that comes after closing. Um, what are what is that junk mail? Do you know what is it that people are getting um, regarding so, that their purchase? Public information once your deed gets recorded. So there are companies that are um, pulling lists every day of who's buying houses, um, and these are uh, people doing yard work. Uh, window people, um, contractors, and then there are also people trying to scam. So there's the one you touched on is, you know, send us $90. We'll send you a copy of your deed, um, even a certified copy. Now what they're doing is technically not illegal because you can go get a certified copy, but if you needed a certified copy of your deed, which I can't think of a reason you ever would, you could Mm -hmm. go to the County and get it for like $20, depending on the County. Some of them are like $5. So And if you need a copy of anything, I think the best advice is what I heard you say is call your agent or your lender or your title guy and say, or title woman or man and say anything, anything that's weird, just let them, let them go over it with you because you can never be too safe. Cause a lot of it does look legit for sure. And I have seen people do the, the deed thing before. And I have also seen a couple of times where you'll go to do a refinance um, and somebody sent some money off of a, a equity line to somebody overseas because they got, you know, yep. caught in a scam. So yep. They, yep. You know, we saw you were refinancing, you know, some of it looks so legit these days, especially it's so know. legitimate. Yeah, exactly. How about what's the, what is the importance of title insurance? You know, cause when we go through hmm, magic question, uh, <laughs> when we go through the, the um, itemization of the closing costs, there's um, obviously fees for all the third parties and there's um, on the title side, there's, you know, the recording and the closing, and then we get to title insurance and there is owner's title insurance as well as lender's title insurance and lender's title insurance is more because the lender is going to make sure that you have title insurance in the event that something were to happen. Cause when you're going through the title piece, um, you're searching and you're making sure that everything is clean and clear and able to move over. But what if there was something that was um, maybe a mechanics lien back there that um, wasn't present whenever you did all of your searching. So the lender is going to make sure that we have insurance on that title to protect the lender but the owner's title insurance is optional, right? Well, we don't want it to be optional. We want them to put title insurance on, don't we? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so, what is it? So <laughs> and why? The, right. The owner's policy, um, I like to think of it as it protects your blind side. So <clears throat> it's like buying car insurance. You know, you can pull a car fax, i.e. title report, everything that's on paper, but there's stuff that's not on paper that might've happened to that car. So you can't get that for your car, but for your home, you can get that. Now, um, it they basically, what we do as the title company for when we're representing you as a purchase is it's our job to make sure you're buying the property clean, and free, and free and clear at the moment. Now, there's a lot of things that have not been filed yet, or I don't want to say a lot of things, but so for instance, uh, people always ask me, what's an instance you've seen somebody uh-huh. that needed to use their title insurance? 
divorces. <clears throat> when people sell a house, when they're going through a divorce, um, there's a lot of different things that can happen. Some things can't get written, recorded properly. Sometimes the deed doesn't get recorded properly. I personally have seen it twice to where uh, this is a true story. I had a guy that tracked down that he was heir to a sale from the 1900s from property in Minnesota that is now has a home on it. And has, we did the last sale last year. And this guy had a legit lien against the property. So we, he, their buyers, you know, their attorney reached out to our buyers, our buyers reached out to us. And then we went to work on going through all the abstracting and the title work and pointing out that we actually did find a recorded decree that took him, that family out of ownership of the property. So wow. it, it, it happens a lot more than you think. Um, and everyone always says it's optional and I can't ever tell anybody what to do, but I can tell you it's a one-time fee for as long as you live in that property. And it will yeah. definitely, you don't want to need it and not have it. Yes. That's what I tell people too, because if you don't have it and you need it, that can cost you thousands of dollars in attorney fees and, and such. So um, I actually have a few stories of my own through clients that were like, I just got a door knock and got served with papers. Please tell me I have insurance. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go back and look. So um, yeah, it's very, very important. And um, the and I, as I mentioned, the lender's title insurance is a little bit more than what the actual owner's title insurance is, but the cost is minimal and it protects them. And it's absolutely something that they should have. I agree. And I've had people that like, they're like, yeah, they're like so budgety that they don't want to pay anything. It's like, you trust me. That's like, Mm, trying to drive your car without gas in it. Like you need the gas, get the insurance. <laughs> and there's, there has been plenty of stories where people have lost their home because they didn't uh-huh. have title insurance. And yep. it's like, you yep. know, something wasn't recorded properly or somebody is actually heir to this property from 50 years ago and discovers that. I mean, it could be legit and yep. you don't have yeah. a house. <laughs> yeah, I had, um, so th- I had a girl that she bought her first house and I mean, she used down payment assistance. Uh, she was a hairdresser. She was a brand new hairdresser, uh, new mom, um, but single. And so anyway, right. Like she just didn't have, she didn't, she was scared to death, right. Of the whole home buying process, but wanted to make it happen. She did it anyway. She bought a property. It was a little townhouse and they had flipped it. And, um, she got a knock on her door. It must have been maybe four to six months later. And it was one of the contractors that hadn't gotten paid. And so she actually was due to pay it. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I am pretty sure that you let's let's go back and look at your documents. And so thankfully, she did have um, matter of fact, it was Liberty Title. Okay. Um, she did have more uh, the title insurance. And so they were able to go ahead and resolve that. So that was good. Um, but I just, there's just, there's times where you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I have a question for you, Melanie. Sure. Um, on the closing. So we are, I work quite a bit out of the um, Keller Williams office in Minnetonka um, and with other Keller Williams agents that um, very much um utilize Minnesota title. Um, I love the fact that you guys are in the office in, in Minnetonka. It's actually in a different suite downstairs. That's kind of cool, especially with COVID because they can just come in the door and leave. They don't have to go to the elevator or anything. Um, but who are your, do you have a designated closer in the Minnetonka office that um, the agents should know about and meet? So Melanie Joseph is our new closer out of that office. Yes. So for the agents that are in the Minnetonka office, um, you know, Melanie is local. She's there. Um, You can have closings down on that first floor. Um, If we have multiple closings at a time, obviously, you know, there's extra conference rooms. Um, But otherwise, you know, she can come right up into the office and and you guys can close right in the office there, too. So I love the convenience level that Minnesota Title offers. Um, you know, kind of like Randy, he's down in Burnsville, right? Right. Um, and so you just, you have, you have people everywhere. And what about mobile closings? Will you um, go mobile? So let's say that we have a relationship with Melanie. Melanie's my closer. And um, for this specific closing, we have to go to Woodbury. That's where the, the closing needs to be for this borrower. Um, is that something Melanie can go there? Or maybe 100%. she has another closer? Absolutely. Yeah. And we have 13 different locations. 
So our closers are traveling quite a bit to wherever they need to go. And COVID has changed things. I mean, we have done signings on people's picnic tables outside. We've gone to their homes if they had a refi. I mean, it's all about comfort level. Of course, we wear our mask. We stay distant. So we feel pretty safe. We've done them through car windows and all that, but it's cold out now. I don't think anyone really wants to do that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, even, you know, um, I've been hearing a lot more close people that I know, know, friends and family that have had, or even currently have COVID. Mm. So let's say we have a closing, um, would that person still, as long as they're feeling okay, would they still be able to mask up, stay in their car and you just have them sign their papers through the car window kind of a thing so that they could keep their closing on track? What do you think, Randy? Have you ever had anybody that you felt was kind of sick, but still wanted to close? Uh, like if they told you, if I said, hey guys, you know what? I'm supposed to be signing on Monday and I just got tested positive. I have one um, today. <laughs> you, do you? Yeah. So do they just, everybody mask up and mm-hmm. here's your papers, like sign? Yeah. So what I'll do is um, I'll print everything, take it down there with mask and gloves on, and they'll do it in their car. I'll either come back here and call them so we can go over it over the phone, or I already went over it with them on the phone before they got down here. Yep. And then I hand them a big manila envelope, and they pop them in the envelope, seal it. It has to sit sealed for 24 hours, I think the CDC said, and then um, we can pull them out and then finish the paperwork. And this is how we do it. Wow. See, we're not delaying closings. We're still closing on time. They're still getting their keys, right? So then Randy gets to hand a little keys through the window. I suppose the agent might hand the keys through the window. But um, yeah, so see, we're not going to let anybody stop us from buying and selling houses, right? Exactly. Nope. Thank you guys so much for explaining all this stuff. I'm sure it was really helpful for the agents. And as you know, New American Funding and Minnesota Title are in a lot of the Keller Williams offices. We do work very closely together. And our information, actually, we will we'll, we'll be typing our information in the chat right now, <laughs> which we'll do live. Um, but Minnesota Title, you can visit our website. It's minnesota-title.com. We've got all of our locations on there. We have a calculator on there um, for your fees and everything. And and I'm Melanie. You can reach out to me anytime. And then, of course, Tanya, you guys, I assume ha- you might have your own website also. Yeah. Yeah. You know where to find me. Um, hopefully you have my cell phone, if not program that in, um, the information's here as well. Um, and then my website is tanyasample.com. Um, and again, you know, if you have a buyer that is wanting to get qualified and ready to go, um, we would love to help them out um, and take them through that process, get them pre-approved, um, and review all their wonderful financial benefits of buying a home. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, yeah, we're here to help you. So thank you for doing this today.